Welcome to the Essential 99 Punctuation Rules for Court Reporters, video number three, Essential Grammar Part 2. I'm Ken Wick. Let's get started. So this video will cover uh, ebook sections G3 to G7, which include uh, independent clauses, dependent clauses, subordinating conjunctions, coordinating conjunctions, conjunctive adverbs and transitional expressions, and parenthetical expressions. So in the group of independent and dependent clauses, an independent clause is a clause. So a clause contains a subject and a verb that does not begin with a subordinate, subordinating conjunction. What is a subordinating conjunction? I'm going to get to that. Uh, an independent clause could stand alone as a simple sentence. So a, dip in, a dependent clause is a clause, which contains a subject, subject and a verb, that begins with a subordinating conjunction. Once again, what's a subordinating conjunction? I'm going to get to that next. It cannot stand alone as a simple sentence. And what do I mean by that? You'll see. So what is a subordinating conjunction? Well, here's a list. Here's a list of common subordinating conjunctions. Um, the ones in bold are very common. So these are words of after, as, because, before, if, since, though, until, when, where, while. So if a clause starts with one of these words, one of these subordinating conjunctions, it is a dependent clause. If, it is, if you have a clause which does not begin with one of these, it is an independent clause. And what these uh, subordinating conjunctions are really doing is, is that they're really linking the, uh, the dependent clause to the independent clause. And you'll find that you can never have a sentence which just consists of a dependent clause. So where you, find, so where you have a dependent clause, you will have an independent clause. So in a relative clause, if you see this term, is just a dependent clause that begins with a relative pronoun of that, who, which, whom, and whose. I could actually just take these green words right here and add them to this list of subordinating conjunctions if you really wanted to. And you can just call these, because uh, these words also make a dependent clause. But just in case you see this word relative clause, it's just referring to a um, dependent clause that starts with these relative pronouns. If you don't know, that is very, this, this word that, who, and which are very common. So let's go through some exercises and see if we can um, determine if clauses are independent or dependent. Um, so here we have the clause, because we have a subject and a verb. Um, does it start with a subordinating conjunction? I'm going to back up. These are the list of them. OK. The answer is no. So this is a independent clause. How about this sentence? The reason they're color coded is you'll see when I get to some examples, I'll want to highlight different portions of the sentence, and I made them blue and red. So I gave the money, I gave him money for a loan. You have here a subject and a verb. Everything else is a uh, prepositional phrase or a, a uh, direct object or indirect object. So this does not start with a, a subordinating conjunction. Therefore, it is an independent clause. I want to say it's almost that easy. So here we actually have um, two, two clauses. We have this clause, she tripped. And then we have the second clause, because she didn't tie her shoe. Now, the first clause, um, subject verb, does not begin with a subordinating conjunction. Therefore, it's independent. The second clause, subject verb, does begin with a subordinating conjunction. Therefore, it is a dependent clause.
when I received my paycheck, I paid the rent. Here we have two clauses. The first clause has a subject and a verb. And it starts with a subordinating conjunction, therefore it is a dependent clause. I paid the rent, subject and verb. It does not begin with a subordinating conjunction, therefore it is a independent clause to dependent and dependent. Some more examples. I do so many of uh, these examples is just so you you really understand this because this is uh, pretty crucial. Um, here we have two clauses. Here's your sentence that has two clauses. The first clause, I made dinner. This is a subject and verb. It does not begin with a subordinating conjunction, therefore it is an independent clause. Here, I went to the store or after I went to the store, you have subject and verb. And this clause does begin with a subordinating conjunction, therefore it is an independent clause. Or dependent, well, independent, dependent. Dependent because it begins with a uh, subordinating conjunction. Might have misspoke there. Next sentence, two clauses. First clause is whenever I see bad punctuation. Second clause is ice cream inside. So here we have this clause as a subject and a verb and begins with a subordinating conjunction. Therefore, it is a dependent clause. Ice cream inside does not subject verb, does not begin with a subordinating conjunction. Therefore, it is a independent clause. The sentence, I live with a nice guy who is my who is my football teammate. First clause is I live with a nice guy. Subject and verb uh, does not begin with a subordinating conjunction. Therefore, it's an independent clause. Who is my football teammate um, does begin with a um, subordinating, con subordinating conjunction. Therefore, it is an, a, a dependent clause. And uh, specifically, since this is a relative pronoun, this is actually a relative dependent clause. And the last example is she spent $1,000. That was for my rent. You have two clauses. First clause, she spent $1,000. Subject and verb does not begin with a subordinating conjunction. I'm starting to sound like a broken record. Um, so this is an independent clause, and that was uh, for, for my rent is a, you have a subject, um, you have a uh, subject and verb, and this clause begins with a subord sub subordinating conjunction, therefore it is a dependent clause. And one thing I wanted to point out, I, th I think I said earlier that, um, you know, an independent clause can stand alone as a simple sentence. So if you go back to where we had independent clauses like I made dinner, you can see this actually, you could, that's just a, you could end the, put a period right here and call that a sentence. On this one, I screamed inside. It's actually a simple sentence. You could actually, that can stand alone all by itself as a, there's another sentence. Just one more example. I live with a nice guy. You could actually put a period right here. You'd have a simple sentence. Now, I said before that a dependent clause cannot stand alone as a sentence. And uh, if, you, if you're a native English speaker, if someone just says a dependent clause, it sort of leaves you hanging. You feel like it's missing something. So if I were to say or begin a sentence or just say this after I went to the store, that's all that I said. You'd be saying uh, you'd, you'd be waiting for something to finish it. Um, after I went to the store, you'd be going and... So this is what I mean, it can't stand alone by, uh, by itself as a sentence. Uh, grammatically, that's because, the, like I said before, the subordinating conjunction is really attaching it to the independent clause. Uh, but uh, just to the ear, you're just left uh, missing something. So if I skip down to, if I just said the beginning of this sentence, whenever I see bad punctu punctu punctuation and just stop, you'd be waiting for something. So you, you feel like the sentence, or would you, I didn't say something, or didn't complete the sentence. 
So that's what I mean by I can't stand alone as a, as a simple sentence. So that is independent and dependent clauses. Oh, and I forgot to finish just that out on the bottom. Coordinating conjunctions. There are seven coordinating conjunctions that join words, phrases, or clauses of equal status. And what I mean by equal status is word to word, phrase to phrase, or clause to clause. The seven coordinating conjunctions are for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. And I bolded the very common ones. Um, but all these words are common. Uh, they spell the acronym FANBOYS, if you look at there. So if you're ever wondering if something is a coordinating conjunction, then you can just think of FANBOYS. So here's an example where two words are joined together. For three days I ate only bread and water. So bread and water are being joined. Here's uh, where two phrases are being joined. The question is to be or not to be. You have two phrases that are being joined by or. And here you have the last one, two clauses. I went to the store and I could not find what I needed are joined by the uh, conjunction but. So you always have word to word, phrase to phrase, or clause to clause with a coordinating conjunction. So conjunctive adverbs and transitional expressions, that's a mouthful. Um, common, if I just list them, you'll probably go, oh, that's what they are. Con conjunctive adverbs and, uh, or common conjunctive adverbs and transi transitional expressions include however, Therefore, for example, in addition, moreover, namely, thus, there's a whole bunch of these. A lot more listed in the ebook. Um, uh, they are used to join independent clauses. And what they do is they show the relationship between the clauses. And one way to identify a conjunctive adverb or transitional expression is that um, it can be moved around the sentence. So a coordinating conjunction, which I just covered, it goes between the words or phrases or clauses, or in this case, remember, uh, conjunctive adverbs and transitional expressions only join independent clauses. So remember, con con conjunct coordinating conjunctions can join other things. And the coordinating conjunction has to go only in a certain spot and can't be moved. Well, a conjunctive adverb or transitional expression can actually be moved. So here we have two independent clauses. I was, I was uh, early to the test, however, I had forgotten my pencil. So you can actually slide this around. You could actually say, I was early to the test. I had forgotten, however, my pencil, or a pencil. And that, would, that, that is a, a, a sign that you have a conjunct, conjunctive adverb or transitional expression. Another example is, uh, I was late to the meeting. And here I'm just emphasizing this is a independent and here's a dependent a clause. So I was late to the meeting because of an accident cause because an accident caused heavy traffic. And then the conjunctive adverb or transitional expression. Nevertheless, I beat my boss by 30 seconds. So like I said before, you can actually move this around and say I was late to the meeting because an accident caused heavy traffic. I beat my boss nevertheless by 30 seconds. So in parenthetical expressions, uh, common parenthetical expressions include yes and no, unfortunately, of course, O oh, and well. Um, parenthetical expressions, they're just comments or explanations that express attitude or opinion. And they can actually be removed from the sentence without affecting the meaning. So remember, you can't, I never said you could remove coordinating conjunctions. And you have to have a, um, a um, conjunctive adverb to show the relationship between independent uh, clauses here. These are just, uh, I call them filler. They're not really joining anything. They're just filling in 
uh, between stuff or filling. I didn't see Amy that day. In fact, I didn't see her that entire week. You actually delete this in fact and still having a, it's not joining anything. It's not telling a relationship. You can say, I didn't see Amy that day. I didn't see her that, I didn't see her that entire week. You actually delete this. So therefore, you know, it's a, um, that's one way to tell that it's a parenthetical. Next example is you could have a uh, question answer. Did you see Amy that day? Oh, I should have put a question mark here. You say, no, I didn't. Now, you could be saying, hold on, how can no be parenthetical or just, you know, just doesn't not really need it? Well, if I said, if I deleted this, I would have, did you see Amy that day? The person could answer, I didn't. You didn't really need no. So no is actually parenthetical. Now, of course, no would not be parenthetical if you didn't have the I didn't. So if you said, I did you see Amy that day? And I said, no. Well, that does not make no parenthetical. So that's it for video number three. Please subscribe. If you like the video, please hit like. And please buy the ebook. Thank you.